Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today's down and dirty. We are out in Minnesota on a road trip. And if you have no idea what I'm talking about, you should click up here. Yeah, I think this corner. And uh, go check out my vlog channel where you can kind of follow along as I travel around the country working with different contractors on different dirt jobs. So anyway, we're in Minnesota working on a dirt job with my friend Carson Schiffsky with Schiffsky Companies. And today we're doing some land balancing for a new subdivision. And I wanted to make a video kind of talking about how to think like a dirt guy. So if you're new to the industry, this can kind of give you a little insight into what your foreman and your superintendents are thinking and kind of why they make the decisions they do. If you're not in the industry, my goal with this video is to kind of show you that while we are all a bunch of dumb dirt guys, we're not really dumb. There's a lot of thought and there's a lot of on the fly improvising that goes on on these job sites as you try to figure out how you're gonna be efficient and productive at the same time. So this is a prime example. So what we've got is this area here, we have already cut down about three feet and I've been bailing with the excavator, throwing it up here so that Colton, who is running the dozer with GPS, can push that material out into the backside of this hill where we have a fill. Uh, that's what the sheep's foot is working on. We're now in a situation where we just talked about it. Uh, there might actually, I have another two to three feet that needs to come out of this area here for a second pass. We might actually be generating too much material than what can go over there, which means it will just stay as a pile. Well, you might ask, what's the problem with that? One of the most unproductive things you can do and the things that will make your cost skyrocket as a contractor is double touching dirt. We actually have a haul truck that's gonna be coming here in the next couple of days. And any extra material on this job is gonna go on the back side of the road here. On the other side of the hoe, we're gonna have a huge stockpile. It makes no sense for Colton to push that material all the way over there today if I generate that material. It makes no sense for me to generate that material if Colton can't do anything with it because that means we put it in a pile. And then when the haul truck's here in a couple days, we have to retouch that pile to put it in the haul trucks to haul it where it ultimately needs to go. Why would you touch it twice? So we're actually figuring out right now if we can leave this material here in place for now, we'll come back to it when we have the haul truck. Well, that means we have to figure out something else to do for today. Well, that's where you get into being a superintendent or a foreman on a job. That's your role is to figure out what your crew needs to do and how you can keep everyone moving and busy while not just making stuff up. You have to be productive. You have to be making the company money. And that's where we get into this situation back over here. If you see the road, um, I can't even see my screen here, but basically there's a little hill in the road here. That needs to come down by about three feet. You're gonna notice that's also close enough that Colton could very easily push that material over to where our stockpile's gonna be. So if we don't need to do anything else up here, instead of generating material here, where we're gonna have to double touch it, we're gonna move up into that area there and we're gonna start cutting it and we can push it right into place and we're done with it. We don't have to double touch it. We're still being productive. We're not putting extra time. We're not putting extra you know, wear and tear on the machines. These are all costs that you have to think about as a contractor. And if you're not the actual contractor, if you're the foreman or the superintendent, you still have to be thinking about these things. That's your job, it's your role is to think about keeping costs down, keeping productivity up. So that's kind of all I've got for today. It's just kind of a sneak peek, a little bit of a window into what it's like to be a dirt contractor, some of the decisions you have to make, some of the things you have to think about on the fly. A whole other aspect that goes into this is we've got rain coming later this afternoon. So we've also got to think about whatever dirt we generate right now, whatever we do to our grade, we have to be able to button this up you know, within a half hour to 45 minutes to where everything drains, we don't have any puddles of water that are gonna turn into giant mud holes so that we can continue to work tomorrow after the rain has stopped. All of these decisions are happening in real time. You have a machine go down. Now you have to adapt and figure out what you're gonna do with that operator and how you can keep him productive where he's not just sitting on the clock riding out the day. All of these things factor into your day-to-day -day job. So while we are a bunch of dumb dirt guys, uh, dirt contractors are incredibly intelligent individuals. They are very, very good at improvising, especially when you get into some of these larger companies, because in the grand scheme of things, we're three operators out here with five pieces of equipment. This is not a big dirt job. It is for you know Carson and his team. It is for a smaller landscape company, stuff like that. But in the grand scheme of the dirt world, this is a small job. 
Think about a job where you've got, you know, anywhere from 60 to 200 pieces of equipment on a job. All of a sudden, these costs and the consequences of double touching material go way up. So anyway, that's all I've got for today. I hope this has kind of been helpful. I hope for you, those of you new to the industry, this kind of gives you a little insight as to why you might be bouncing all over the job. Uh, and if you're not in the industry, I hope this gives you kind of an idea of what, it, what we kind of think about in the dirt world and, and what we're doing. And again, so you know, you might see us working down at one end of the road one day and we might be all the way at the other, other end of the job the next day. You know, this is kind of a little insight as to why that happens and what our thought process is. So I hope this has been helpful as always. If there's any questions, comments, absolutely drop them below and we'll catch you guys on the next video.